Hey, what's up, everybody? You're now tuned into T. Mm. T. Oh. And it's your girl, Jazzy J. In. My diesel. Yeah, we in the building, y'all. Hey, y'all, we want to um, thank our sis, K Money, who made us aware of this case. If you have mm. not heard about Marvin Lewis Guy, we need you to look him up. Marvin Lewis Guy. A little bit about him is the police came in, busting in his house with a no-knock warrant. Um, he ended up exercising his rights because he did not know it was the police and shooting. And, um, we don't know exactly what happened, but we are almost sure that it was the police that accidentally shot a police officer. But this man has been waiting in prison for seven years, y'all, almost eight years with no trial. Um, he is a part of the Texas judicial system and us coming from Texas, we know exactly how crooked the system is. Um, so we are doing everything we can to get the word out about this. Thank you, K Money, for sharing it to us. Um, so there is a video that's going to be attached that is his um, autobiography that was made. We want you guys to check this out. We're not going to post the whole thing because we want you guys to go over to the website. We will have listed, we've already signed the petition for him. We will have the list, um, the link for the petition. So you guys can go sign that. And we will also have the link um, to go so you can help with his legal defense fund. Uh, we did find out that he has obtained what is it called, babe? Um, private private lawyer. A private lawyer mm -hmm. now. He's no longer represented by a public defender. So Mike and I are doing more research. We also have here tagged Governor Abbott's number is somebody that we need to reach out to and call and demand justice and let him know that we are looking to have um, a trial for this man. Uh, eight years, this is crazy. Um and last thing, they're also attached here. We'll show you that there was a white man that actually did kill a cop for sure that busted in his house with the same exact instance, and he is not in jail. So that just shows you the crookedness of the system, y'all. Uh, so we really want y'all to watch this, go to the website, sign the petition, and we will be making calls, and we're going to be keeping up with his story, and we're going to be letting you guys know more information as we get it. All right, y'all? If you can imagine just sitting there in the silence of the night, your window being busted, you would be scared. And the first thing you're probably going to do is reach out for your gun and try to save your family. What I know is that a tragedy happened. There are two families that are hurting because of this. Marvin has lost seven years of his son's life, his brother's lives, of his grandkids' lives, seven years. I moved to uh, Maine to get a fresh start on life, to get a job and work, and uh, to be around my family. And uh, I did that. That was one of the most happy times that I had in my life. Uh, I met Shirley to go to the gym every day. We went to church every Sunday. And Shirley was a, a very sweet person. So we had a good life, man, you know? I mean, everything was perfect. You know, just me and Shirley against the world. Shot. Hey, I'm a 
a good practice to just bust in someone's house. It contradicts the stand your ground, uh, the castle doctrine, able to protect your home. He had no idea that there was the police on the other side of that door. The no-knock was based solely on the informant's accusation that Marvin was dealing cocaine. They didn't find any drugs. They didn't find what they came there looking for. There is a lot of speculation that the round that killed that officer may not have even came from Marvin's firearm. That is something that happens when you bust in from different directions. You've just set off a flashbang, which doesn't just affect the suspects. Everybody in that vicinity that gets that shockwave of the sound and the, the light, it's going to affect them too. Marvin may have, have fired his gun, but I don't think that was the fatal shot. They had to find a scapegoat, and that scapegoat was Marvin. Marvin's family gave me the case file. Pretty much the whole entire newsroom knew that I was working on this case. Some of the most surprising things were that police didn't find anything. I also was very surprised by at least one police statement that seemed to indicate he stuck his pistol, his service weapon, inside Marvin's mouth when he came out the back door so far that Marvin was throwing up. If no drugs was found, then why is this man still locked up? He exercised his right to protect his home. I believe that you got to hold the uh, city accountable for what happened. They screwed up, to be frank. And I think uh, that a lot of times people take the police word for it, and the police will lie and cover up everything. We know that. We know that from experience. Because it was a botched raid, they did no police work, a police officer lost his life, and Marvin Guy has been detained for seven years now with no trial. Unconstitutionally, there was nothing found, but they took the word of an informant. But that's always a dirty business. This whole dirty business of jailhouse confessions, you cut me a deal. So I don't think they sent anyone to make a buy, check the place, they had the diagrams wrong. It could have gone smooth. They could have knocked the door open. The guy said, oh, I give up. But they don't. And then each mistake you make just compounds the, the chances that it's going to go badly. Shirley hid in a closet and waited until the shooting stopped. And when police called, they said, come out with your hands up. She did as she was told. And as soon as she got out the door, she doesn't remember anything. I lived right across the street. They tackled Shirley really hard. Her face hit the concrete. Uh, it was just, it was just really, really, it was, it was horrible. She woke up laying in the street. She was taken eventually to the police station where she was interrogated and she had some trouble breathing, and so she was taken to the hospital that night. I think Marvin had every right to defend himself. Marvin felt like he was under threat that night. He felt like someone was breaking into his home, and he defended himself. When it came time for 
his case to go to trial and for the evidence to be presented, time and time again, that was put off until Marvin has now been sitting in jail for almost seven years without a trial for a crime that he has not been convicted of. And to me, that is unconstitutional and it's extremely unjust. I would almost guarantee you that Henry Garza is one of the main reasons that Marvin Guy is still sitting in the Bell County Jail without having gone to trial. Henry Garza has already been in trouble for hiding exonerating evidence. He's already been in trouble for holding people in jail without a trial. I believe Henry Garza is incompetent. I believe he has violated civil rights. And for him to allow this atrocity to drag on is just the worst, you know, the worst thing that a person in his position can do. When Marvin first got to jail, he had been injured during the arrest. He was in really poor shape. They were just waiting for him to die in jail. If he died in jail, he didn't have to go to trial. Nobody gets convicted, but also the evidence stays buried forever. Soon after I got the case file, the city manager and the police chief, uh, it may have been an assistant police chief, showed up to the newspaper and demanded of the publisher that I be either fired or removed from the beat. Clay Thorpe is, is a man of integrity that no right from wrong, and he see the wrong in this. Then the way to silence you is to go ahead and just get rid of you. And that's what they did. They, they ran him out of town. I believed very strongly that I did my best to cover that case fairly and objectively. And I feel like I paid for it. Hank McGee's case was fascinating to me from the very outset because it involved a no-knock warrant. His girlfriend, who's pregnant, is asleep on the couch, and all of a sudden they hear an explosion. Cops had thrown a flashbang, a percussion grenade, and he hears pounding on the door. No voices, nobody said, please open up, nothing like that. I mean, what, what is somebody supposed to do? I mean, people are breaking in the house, and I looked at Corey, and I asked her, I was like, what the fuck was that? And she looked at me. I ran to my room. I knew I had uh, one of my firearms outside of my safe, and I grabbed it, and by the time I came back in the room, I started hearing Corey just scream. She was just screaming like bloody murder. It was a deputy sheriff who had no uh, real markings that could be seen. Uh, and he shot him dead. And I remember them yelling, it's the sheriff's department. And by then, it was, everything was too late. What's the only difference in this case? Guy's black, McGee is white. Do we live in two Americas? The answer is yes. The exact same thing happened. But he's sitting in jail for seven years for exercising his, his rights. McGee's not. 